This conference will now be recorded. This conference is no longer being recorded. This conference will now be recorded. Good evening. My name is Dave Sabathney. I'm the president and CEO of the Western DuPage Chamber of Commerce. In 2011, the, West, uh, the Warrenville Chamber of Commerce joined with two other small chambers of commerce um, to create the Western DuPage Chamber of Commerce. So this is now our aluminum anniversary. Um, and <laughs> I think the rock is limestone or something. Um, but it is my honor tonight uh, to introduce um, this State of the City Address here in Warrenville on our 10th anniversary. Now, I had thought about providing a gift to celebrate our 10th year anniversary to Mayor Brummel, but knowing his love of outdoors and the environment, I know where that would have ended up. Um, so, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you, Mayor Brummel, uh, the staff of the City of Warrenville, and the incredible teams of the Fire Protection District, the Park District Library, our educators and our healthcare workers that serve the community and our families. What each of you have done to support our residents and businesses has made the uncertainty less scary and provided the strength to withstand the scary knowing we were not alone. On behalf of the Chamber of Commerce, our board of directors, our staff and our members, we'd like to thank the residents of Warrenville for your continued support by shopping local, by ordering takeouts and picking up your own orders so that our businesses could retain more of the revenue. And I say revenue because it should not be confused with profit. Even today, many of these businesses are continue to struggle and have not been able to take home a profit for some time. So please continue to patronize these local owned businesses and let them know how much we value them and support them. Finally, I'd like to share a definition of success I learned many years ago that seems so appropriate tonight. Success, the single succession of successful businesses one day following another. The single succession of successful days one right after another. And that's so appropriate because it's what we observe here in Warrenville each and every day. And so here to share with you the results of the, of the succession of successful days, one right after another here in Warrenville over the past year, it's my privilege to introduce our mayor, the Honorable David Drummel.
I learned something tonight. Red means off, green means on. 17 years. <laughs> um, okay, I'm back to, back to staff. Staff does most of the heavy lifting, does all of the hard work of finding us outside sources for income, uh, helps us discover liabilities and that have been going on for years, uh, little uh, things that need to be changed that we could do better, constantly um, trying to uh, give us the opportunity as elected officials to do a better job. And so I must, first of all, thank staff for all of their hard work. None of this would be possible without their professionalism and their decency and, and their integrity. Um, the other elected officials, of course, we have uh, eight aldermen, we have a clerk, and we have a, a treasurer, top-notch people. I couldn't ask for a better group. Um, we have a couple of new folks in the audience. Um, hope you're going to be around for another 17 years. That was the commitment, by the way. I hope you realize that. Uh, you have to at least match where I'm at right now. Uh, but a great group of folks with different perspectives, uh, different ideas, uh, very collegial, work together well, respectful of each other, always thoughtful for the best interests of the community. I, I must thank the elected officials uh, for making, again, all of this possible. Uh, our employees, uh, again, uh, top-notch folks uh, who are on the front lines, getting everything done out there in the community, interacting with our, our citizens uh, on a first-name basis many times. I lose track of how many times I uh, get an email or a call from some saying, you know what, we had so-and-so here. They were a delight to help us work. Uh, they were helpful, they were friendly, they were professional, and they solved a problem for us. That's what we try to do. So I hear that frequently. Uh, commission members, we have uh, approximately 80 people volunteering to do work on our commissions. Uh, phenomenal. And I rarely have an opening that lasts for more than a, a few weeks because someone else steps up. And the quality of the people that step up is just phenomenal. So I'm very grateful for that. And finally, behind all of that is the uh, supportive and engaged citizens that we have here in Warrenville. Um, it's, again, another delight to work with them. Um, it all comes together to create a culture that um, it's going to be hard to disengage from someday because uh, it's so productive. It's exactly what we should be doing as a community here in Warrenville. Uh, government should be serving the people. The people should be aware of what's going on, have control of that indirectly through their rep um, representatives. It works. Um, and that's maybe the, the biggest thing that I'm, I will take away from this is remembering how well the city of Warrenville did things right. And uh, we intend to keep that going next year too. So uh, with that, let's go on to find out what's going on. Um, I have a little quote for you to start things out. I found this a while ago. I was listening to the radio in the shop and this song came on and uh, it really resonated with me. What do we do when we get back to normal and we find ourselves out in the world again? What do we do when we get back to normal and we find we're somewhere we ain't never been? Um, that kind of says it all in terms of looking forward at this point. We've, uh, we're in kind of a, a, an interesting transitional state right now, but we don't know a lot of the changes that are going to stick, some of them are not going to stick. How are we going to deal with those changes? It is going to be a different world. Um, when COVID recedes, uh, we're not going to be in the same place we were before. We're still going to have other problems to deal with. Climate change is not going to go away. That's going to continue to intensify. Um, but how we're going to deal with those things that are so much different than what we're used to dealing with um, is going to be an interesting prospect for us. We, of course, have the old normal that everybody wants back because nostalgia to paints everything with a nice, colorful blush, doesn't it? Let's go back to the way we had it. Of course, uh, that may or may not be a good idea. We have the, the current normal, which is very unsettling because there's so much that's unknown about the future. There's so many things we have to deal with today that are very unsettling and troubling. And then we're hoping for that new normal, which is going to take the best of what we've experienced in the past, what we've gone through now, and what we've learned, and give us a place that's better than before. Um, the fear, of course, is that the current normal in a number of years might become the good old days for somebody else. Think about that for a while. It's entirely possible. Um, but we still uh, continue to carry on. We will have certainly challenges going forward. Um, <clears throat> revenue challenges, uh, even those are increasing, but how far are they going to bounce back in terms of what we had in the past? Um, what's going to be different? We have six hotels in Warrenville. Um, we're 
They're supported largely by business travel. Business travel has changed dramatically in the last couple of years. Is that going to bounce back, or is it going to? Are they going to have to pivot to some other thing that we haven't figured out yet to keep them alive? But certainly, that's very important to the community that we have our hotel motel tax and we have that vitality that they provide. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you an executive summary right now in case if some of you got something else got to do. Um, Warrenville had a pretty good year. We did okay. Uh, some things we did very well in. So reassurance, Warrenville's in a good spot. The prospect for next year is we're going to do okay again, maybe a little bit better in some things. So um, from that jumping off point, uh, feel good about Warrenville. We're, we're doing well. I'm going to give you some good examples of the progress that we've made as a community. Um, and let's do that right now. As in the past, we've uh, uh, used our strategic plan goals as a framework for the metrics that we use uh, to determine what kind of success we had last year and what we're aiming for next year. So these are the six main goals of our uh, strategic plan. Um, I will go through each of those with some examples of some successes we've had this year and some things that are in progress. Then we'll do the same thing for what we anticipate for next year. So that's the framework we're going to work from. Uh, next, please. That gives you an idea of uh, kind of the mission statement uh, involved with economic development. Um, and some of the projects that we've seen completed in the past year. Uh, keep in mind, too, that some of these you've probably seen again, uh, and you've seen them in the past. Most projects are multi-year projects. They don't start in one year and end in the same year. Some go on for several years. Uh, Stafford Place, uh, I think about three years, 27 single-family homes in the $400,000 to the $630,000 range. All sold. I talked to Court Earhart last week. They sold the last one. So every single one of those has sold in that new neighborhood. If you're not familiar with that area, it was a contaminated industrial space before the city got involved with it. Um, due to the diligence, again, of our staff over a period of, and again, here's how things can drag out, 10 years. We got that from a contaminated uh, industrial site to a beautiful little neighborhood in our community. Those are the kind of successes that we all live for, and staff especially, because they put most of the work in there to make that happen. The Warrenville Horizon Senior Housing, 71 apartments for older folks who are of limited means. It's a, a rent-subsidized type arrangement, so you pay according to your ability to pay from uh, your income. There are currently 75 people living there. Um, uh, guys, I believe 71 of those are women, if you're interested in uh, making a change at some point. Um, but what a wonderful place for those folks to spend their time now right by the river, close to downtown, close to all the things that they can walk to. Um, that's a, roughly a $20 million investment in our community, and uh, it was really a very welcome change from an abandoned restaurant and two um, older homes that um, had served their purpose, but it um, was time for them to go. Everton Flats Apartments, 259 units up there at Everton Flats, uh, all rented. Uh, they barely got them done, and they all rented. They're a high-end apartment. Uh, they're very nice. If you visit them, the amenities are excellent. Uh, the rents, uh, however, a little different from when we were young, between $1,500 and $3,000 a month. Uh, but the amenities that are provided for those folks are phenomenal. Uh, it's a place where you can move in and you really can come home and stay there all night and still have a good time. And then you're about five minutes from the prairie path because it's connected. Because one of the things that we always do is new developments are always connected to paths and trails as much as we're able to do. Um, Arden Apartments. Uh, another successful story for Warrenville, doing very well. Um, we have Little Friends for the Center, uh, Little Friends Center for Autism, which is uh, the Little Friends used to be located in Naperville. Um, they came to Warrenville, they bought a building and rehabbed it. It's a 74,000 square foot facility for uh, dealing with folks of all age with autism. I visited there several times. It's a phenomenal operation. It's one of the nice things that we would love to continue in our community. They put down some roots. They're going to be here for a long time. They're doing a lot of good for folks. Things that are under construction. Uh, Everton Townhomes, the second phase of that or second part of that development up there, 89 units. Um, they're from 350 to 440,000. 
51 occupancy permits already issued for that place. Again, a very nice place, uh, visiting there. Um, Ron and I toured through that place, and we said, yeah, if we were younger, this would be a great place to live again. We also have some early retired folks that are moving to Warrenville into those apartments as they determine what their final destination is going to be when they do retire. Uh, it's an interim choice for them. They find it to be a very attractive way to live. Uh, where everything's taken care of for them, it's all new and nice, and uh, there are a lot of young folks around, and uh, they have some freedom to decide what they're going to do ultimately. Vanguard at Cantera is just uh, kind of getting started. It's been going for a long time, another high-end uh, apartment complex, 242 units, uh, right by the Regal Theater. Um, we're hoping for occupancy early in uh, 2022, so uh, another place that's uh, almost certainly going to be very successful because of all the amenities that they are providing along with their apartments. Uh, Lexington Trace, uh, another interesting uh, success story in that there are 106 units there. Um, they're not all built, but they're all sold. Uh, that was a phenomenal uh, turnover for those folks, and they were very surprised at that. Uh, we weren't, of course, because we said, hey, you're in Warrenville. What did you expect? Uh, so a lot of people coming into Warrenville that are going to help support our businesses, help support our police department, all the services we provide. Um, you know, people worry that, oh, my goodness, we're going to have all the traffic, we're going to have all those people. But those people bring vitality to the community. They pay taxes. They help support services that all of us benefit from. Um, they go from 300 to 400,000. Uh, none of these things are cheap anymore. Some of these numbers make me nervous sometimes because I'm old and I remember when they were a lot smaller, but um, we make adjustments, right? Um, on to the next one. This is a very exciting prospect, another one that we've been working on for a long time. Um, an abandoned gas station, a contaminated site with a significant contamination. Um, we uh, made attempts to buy it over a long period of time and were thwarted many, many times. And finally, um, again, Ron was able to put things together and we were able to purchase it for a very reasonable price um, and uh, begin the, the uh, mitigation of the contamination there. The storage tanks have been removed. Um, we have a loan that is helped that helped to pay for that and is going to pay for other contamination cleanup. Uh, we have plans, uh, uh, preliminary plans of what we would like to see there. If you're interested to see what that is, there's a whole parcel of information on the website um, with the preferred plan. I think it's plan B that everyone seems to get a, be getting behind. So we're, we're very encouraged that at some point um, we're going to see something nice there as opposed to uh, an abandoned gas station, which if you've noticed has been erased at this point. Um, but with, there are still some other issues that have to be dealt with uh, to, to move forward. But uh, as with every other project that we do like this, uh, staff is able to identify outside sources of uh, income to help us make that happen. Uh, that revenue uh, really makes a big difference. This is another example, I think, a perfect textbook example of how community has to do things to make them happen. If you left this site the way it was, contaminated industrial site, it would be that way forever because for a private entity to come in, clean up contamination that they don't even know the extent of, tear down the buildings, build a new building, uh, it's not going to happen. No one would do that. The community was in a position because of our TIF district to buy that property. We can clean it up. We can fix it up. It could become a vital part of the community. Footnote, next door, Stafford Place, exactly the same thing. It would have never developed without the community being involved. Uh, these are the kind of things that the elected officials and the staff, this is what makes us happy to see these kind of things happen. The commitment that it takes to, over a period of years is important, um, and we managed to pull it off. So this is another one that at some point we're going to see something nice there. So um, we're all very excited at the prospects. One of the things that we... Um, I got, council is always, as long as I've been involved, have been very um, supportive of local businesses. Of course, we had to do a lot of pivoting with, can, with uh, COVID. Uh, outdoor seating program, we put a temporary program in to help some local businesses so that they could stay alive. We made that permanent now um, so that restaurants can change the way they're doing things, accommodate people on the outside. Um, we've had volunteers help uh, Evelette Eve Wine Shop. That's a picture of that. They're very, very successful. And uh, because of collaboration between volunteers and the city and the business owner uh, and the owner of the building, we're able to take that and, and make it into a, a viable, successful destination business that people come from all over. 
Monica tells me the, the zip codes and the towns that people come from, they come specifically to, to that wine shop because of her reputation. That's really good for Warrenville. So we're hoping that some more rehab of that bank building is coming in the future, and we're going to see some other neat businesses. We have the bike shop now. You may have noticed the plywood on the, on the windows. Don't let that dismay you. That's because there have been a lot of smash and grabs in other uh, suburbs, and they were concerned that that could happen to them. If you remember, there's a lot of glass on the front of that. They have quite a bit of inventory. They have some really nice bikes that uh, make me drool, but um, that when I was younger, I probably would have been in there more often. Now I'm just happy to ride the tandem with Mary. So uh, that's another great new business. So we're looking forward to some other stuff there. That's going to be really good. Um, building is down considerably. Um, if you take a look at the numbers there, our total construction, 35 and a half million. Uh, from 2020, it was 57 million. In 2019, 96 million. Uh, those numbers are somewhat misleading. The vitality is still there. There's a lot of happening. Notice the bill uh, building permit inspections, uh, almost 2,000 of those, and 737 uh, building permits issued, which is pretty much on par with what we normally do. So the numbers are a little bit down, but the vit vitality is still there. In terms of our next goal, fiscal conservatism, um, <clears throat> we still have no debt. We intend to keep it that way. Um, what am I missing here? Don't mind me. Um, on to the next one, managing COVID f fiscal crisis that has been, um, what shall I say? It has been demanding. It has been frustrating many times. Um, it has been worrisome. It has been stressful, but we're making it through. Uh, we continue to watch things constantly to see if there are ways that we can save, we can do things better, uh, things that we can defer uh, and put off for a while until the money starts coming back in. Um, notice the hotel tax revenue uh, is only about two-thirds of what it was before the pandemic. Um, that was almost a, a million dollars for us at the point, so we've lost three, four hundred thousand dollars there. That's a, an important part of what we have as a community for resources. We are blessed in that um, Vivian Lund, before she retired, um, helped us become a home rule community. Home rule community means that we get to spend the hotel tax money however we see fit. Whereas if you're not home rule, you have to spend it on tourism and um, getting people to have overnight stays. So we're able to support other parts of the community with that income. So this hurts a little bit when it's down so low. Food and beverage tax coming back pretty strong. Um, that's encouraging. And of course, how we conduct our business, 28 years in a row, perfectly clean slate, um, everybody. Uh, we have a, an outside accounting firm that comes in and looks at everything that we do. They apply the standards that are, we are required to follow. And thanks to Kevin and his group, we always do it flawlessly. So that's something you can be proud of. There are plenty of redundancies also. People worry sometimes about you know what happened out in Dixon, that woman that embezzled $52 million or whatever over a period of 10 years. Can't happen here because there are too many people looking at the stuff all the time. Um, so we're very careful about that. I'm very proud of our financial group, our group at this, uh, um, the team that Kevin have downstairs is outstanding. Um, some money coming in, which thank goodness the federal government has helped us out a little bit, uh, almost 700000 in CARES Act funding. Um, that's going to help to offset uh, the overtime and the additional uh, expenses that we've had because of COVID. Um, another 900000 in two ARPA payments will be coming, and the, the council is currently discussing ways that we can use that uh, to the best advantage of the community. That helps fill the hole quite a bit from what we've lost in terms of revenue over the last two years. It's a bridge. You know, it's, it's not, um, not going to make everything perfect, but it helps us bridge to better times. And uh, so we're very grateful for that. Reducing property taxes. Um, that's hard to do because property taxes are a large part of our uh, revenue source. Um, we have, however, uh, again, going back to Vivian Lund and getting us uh, to be a home rule community, we made a promise at that point that we would, going forward every year, abide by the tax cap um, that's provided by the state. We have done that successfully every single year since then. Uh, we take, make a resolution every year to abide by the tax cap um, and so that we minimize the impact on our uh, citizens. Uh, if you look at your tax bill, for most of the community, it's about 9% of your tax bill. 
So uh, if your tax bill is $1,000 and your place is really small, uh, only $90 of that goes to the city of Warrenville. Um, part of the community is in a different school district and it's a different percentage. It's actually a little bit smaller for them. It's about 7% uh, because they're in uh, West Chicago School District. But roughly, again, um, we're lean and mean here at the city of Warrenville. And uh, to re-emphasize my point earlier, the private development that we've been seeing, while it's dismaying to maybe some of the older members of the community because things are changing, it's necessary for the vitality and uh, the, the stabilization of the community and the fact that we have to go forward. We want to leave something a little better than we found it. S open space and environment, extremely important to us and to our citizens. Um, we have a solar energy program that um, all of us, I think, would like to see uh, move at a faster pace, but of course, a lot of that is determined by the, the market and uh, some of the things that are available right now. It's very expensive and impractical to make some of the changes yet because the technology is still evolving. Uh, we are watching all of that very carefully uh, in the hopes that we can do some more installations on city-owned properties. We've started a residential program and notice we've already had some people take advantage of that. Um, we make sure that uh, new developments have accommodations at least if they're not gonna use solar. For instance, the uh, Warrenville Horizon Center uh, has solar on their roof. It's a white roof with solar panels up there. And they also have, uh, um, if you go in there, there are the chasins and whatever necessary to expand that program over a period of time. So we're very careful to make sure that anybody who comes with the development at least has the potential to use solar in the future. Uh, we push new gas stations. Uh, I don't know how hard we've pushed against the Thorntons up there. I know Alderman Widener was very vocal in trying to get them to uh, do some solar. No, they're not ready to do that yet. Um, so it's a constant battle to try to keep people um, interested in knowing that that is the future. It has to be the future. Um, it hasn't caught up with some of our corporate uh, citizens yet, but it will eventually. Um, and we have our little solar-powered traffic speed displays. I'm sure you've noticed those, and your numbers are always within acceptable limits, I'm sure, uh, because you're all good citizens. Pathway improvements, uh, something else that's really, really important to us. Um, Again, Alderman Widener and I, when we were first elected, started the Warrenville Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission so that we can improve the situation throughout the city. Uh, within a couple of years, we had our, um, uh, what is it, not, not gold, where the bikes were like three, three communities in DuPage County are uh, certified at a bike friendly at the bronze level, I believe it is, uh, Elmhurst, Naperville, and ta-da, Warrenville. Um, so some good work has been done there. Again, all developments are required to make sure that we have connections, that we have new paths where possible. Um, one of the biggest things that we want to do, and it was held up a little bit by some contra attempts with Commonwealth Edison. I'm sure you've never had any problems with Commonwealth Edison, but we had some misunderstandings there. So that project has been languishing for a little while. We've gotten past that. We've gotten the approvals we need from them. Uh, again. A good deal of that money is going to be coming from outside sources, thanks to staff of finding the things that get these things done. A big investment. Um, we're hoping to see that in the fall of 2022. It's going to change this whole area out here. The first big change, of course, was when we cleaned it all up and all the scrub trees were cut down and we were accused of butchery and everything else you could imagine because it looked different. Um, and I understand that. People were used to the trees. They were used to the bushes. They were used to the path that had kind of a tunnel through it. It's all open now. Uh, most people like the view. Uh, it really looks, now you can see the city of Warrenville here. You can see the new development. And with the more landscaping and with the, the trailhead project completion with a, a little building there and restrooms and bicycle repair station and memorial to the prairie path is going to be a delightful add to the city and hopefully we'll get us some more businesses in the bank building. Um, the Mack Road multi-use trail is another thing that we've been trying to accomplish for many years. If you've ever either ridden a bike, run or walked along Mack Road, um, it's very dangerous. It's a narrow road. There's no shoulder. Uh, it's not a good place to spend time. I have spent many hours getting through that as quickly as I could so I could get out into Fermilab. Um, we're hoping to get a multi-use trail to connect McKee Marsh with Route 59 so that people can stay off the road and get up there safely. Um, there's a little bit of pushback from the people on the north side of the road. They're used to their front yards. That's understandable. They like them the way they are. Um, we have to convince them that this is an amenity that will be good for their property values that will 
Eventually, when they sell, the family's going to buy and to have a trail out in front of their house where their kids can get on a bike and get in the forest preserve safely or go to the next subdivision safely is going to be a huge plus for them. Um, so we've been working with the city staff with the Forest Preserve District. We're waiting on some IDOT approvals at this point, uh, but that is moving along. We're hoping to see that happen along with the new bridge, which I can talk about too in a little bit. Uh, the bridge has reached its uh, useful life and we're ready to replace that. City infrastructure, number four. <clears throat> the road program's a little bit reduced. Again, we have uh, pivoted by um, putting off things that we could put off reasonably. All of our roads, all of our sidewalks, curbs, gutters, all of that stuff is in the, um, the CMRP, the Capital Maintenance and Replacement Plan. Every, the roads are to be redone every 15 years and maintained on a certain schedule. Uh, when we've had inspections of the roads and we found that we could put off some maintenance or put off some replacement, we've done that to save money, uh, anticipating that revenues will rebound and we'll be in a better position. So that's a little bit reduced for this year. Um, there's a picture coming up at the Historical Society Museum, uh, our little special place in Warrenville from the artists from years ago that we're trying to maintain uh, our history in. If you've driven by recently and you'll see from the picture it's in bad need of some exterior maintenance so we're doing that. Um, the police station uh, of 1997 was uh, when that was installed. It's time to replace it so the H HVAC system was replaced there. Uh, these are just examples. The stu uh, storm sewer lining was a problem on under uh, Route 59. There was a leak. Um, and we were able to get in there and fix that without disrupting the traffic. But all of these things are an example of how we maintain things. We don't let them get past where um, they can be fixed uh, reasonably. Um, the preliminary engineering has been done for the Mack Road Bridge. Again, that is a bridge that is um, uh, past its usefulness. It's still safe. It's not a problem. But it has no accommodation, again, for bicycles or for pedestrians. We want to incorporate in that into the new bridge. Um, Interesting historical note for you, there, there used to be a stone bridge there before the concrete bridge was there. And my neighbor um, across the street, if you've ever been down Williams Road and you see the house that looks like an A-frame, um, he built that house by hand, by himself. He was a very interesting artistic man. He, took, he was, got permission to take the stones to, from that bridge and he dragged them with his Jeep on a skid and he built his house out of those stones from the bridge. So when you go down Williams Road, look for the A-frame house. Um, that used to be a bridge in Warrenville, and uh, it's kind of an interesting sidelight. Side he was a very artistic man, did a great job. Um, and the I&I &I program, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, pretty prosaic, I guess, but a, a very, very important in case you aren't aware um, all of our sewage is not treated. We don't have our own uh, treatment plant. It's all sent to Naperville. We have a contract with them. Uh, we have uh, limits uh, um, as to how much we can send. We have storm surges that indicate that there are a lot of leaks in the system. Uh, Naperville calls up and says, you know what, you've got to do something about that, which makes sense uh, from their perspective because they have to deal with it. From our perspective in that our citizens have to pay extra money uh, to have storm water in the sewage water to be cleaned up, which makes no sense. So we have a continuing program of different parts of the city where we do smoke testing. If you ever see smoke coming out of the ground in front of your house, relax. It's not a fire. It's they're testing the pipes to see if there are leaks uh, so that we can repair those leaks, we can stop the infiltration, we can get the costs down for our citizens, and we can stay within the limits of what we're allowed at the city of Naperville to send them. Um, so that's an important program. Another thing that gets done behind the scenes that you don't think about but it has to be done. It's part of those things that uh, the community needs to do to take care of themselves. So if I could have the next slide, please. <clears throat> Just a couple of pictures of uh, things going on. You see the Albright Museum. Uh, squint a little bit and you can see it needs to be scraped and painted. Uh, the crane uh, lifting the HVAC, the new stuff, onto the police station. The before and after of that repair up on 59. Uh, it's just incredible that they can do these things, that they push an umbrella through there, pump it up, and you got yourself a new pipe that'll last another 30 years without having to do any excavation. It's just a, a miracle of modern technology. Uh, public safety, <clears throat> very important in our community. Um, the police station, uh, police department, besides keeping us safe, has all these other things because one of the single most important elements to public safety is connection between the citizens and the police department, between the officers and the people they serve. Our department makes every effort to make sure that that connection is very strong. 
Uh, one of the things that we invite people into the police station to bring their um, expired and unused uh, prescriptions. Uh, you, what do you do with those? You can't flush them down. You can't put them in the garbage. You bring them to the police station, and they're recycled in a, in a positive way, in a safe way. 505 pounds last year. That's, you know, little bottles that weigh, what, a couple of ounces? Imagine 505 pounds. It gets those out of the medicine cabinets in homes. If you know that sometimes that kids will go to the medicine cabinets and take stuff and experiment with it. If it's not there, they can't do that. So there's another benefit to that. Um, we check up on people that are on our list of uh, needing to be checked on when the weather's bad and when there are circumstances that they might be in harm's way. Um, we, like every other community, uh, have problems with over-enthusiastic fireworks people on the 4th of July, before and after and in between. Um, we've, we had a citizen come into one of our meetings one time who had, I, these are the kind of citizens that you really love. She came in and she had a complaint and she also had a bunch of possible solutions for us. So she said, this is a real problem. It's bad for PTSD with veterans. It's bad for our pets. Here are some things that other communities are doing. And she had all the information and she gave that to us. And our police department being what it is, acted on that and we've reduced, I hope you've noticed in the last couple of years, uh, the disruption by illegal fireworks dramatically in the city because of, the, because of one citizen coming in and saying, here's what you can do, and then us following up on it. So I'm proud of our department for that. Um, National Night Out, I believe, can three awards, national awards at least. Um, for the size of our community, we are recognized nationally as doing it very, very well, among the best in the nation. That's incredible. Um, this used to be a kind of a small neighborhood thing. Our department has taken it and turned it into one of our signature events in town. Uh, we get all kinds of families and folks coming out. We get all kinds of people out there, presenters. It's just a, a delightful thing. The weather um, cooperates with us most of the time, um, but it's been very, very successful. And again, that's run by our department. We also do, uh, they also do other things, the Toys for Tots, the St. Jude's Hospital, the Special Olympics. I think there were a couple of awards out there that Dawn put out that we got recently, the department got for the participation in that. We had, the one was $11,000 this year that we came up with for that program, which is, you know, phenomenal. Again, a volunteer thing for the police department, um, plus their regular duties. Um, I always love driving through town. I don't think there's ever a time when I drive through town and I don't pass one or two squads at least, sometimes more than that. They're out in the community, extremely important to have that visibility for our safety. They know what they're doing, they have time where they're allowed to go around and do what they think is important, and the other time it's assigned time. Um, but they're out there all the time and it makes a huge difference. Um, next slide. A result of all of that diligence by our department, this is one ranking that we got recently among the top 50, we were 47. Uh, 47th in the state of Illinois of the safest communities. Um, you know, was there a couple thousand communities? That's pretty remarkable, right at the top. There was one a year or two ago where we were rated the safest community in Illinois. Um, that does not happen by accident. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens because you have good people making sure you're safe. Um, the body-worn cameras. Um, there's a requirement that uh, police departments in Illinois have those by 2025. 2021, Warrenville's already done it. I think we were among the, were the, among the first five that did it in the, in the county. Um, our chief and our people see things that need to be done, they get done. Our officers love it because it's good for them. Our citizens are protected because everything's on, on tape and very well documented. An excellent program recognized again by our department as something that needed to be done. Our elected officials had to come up with the money to do it. We found the money and it got done and now our offices all have their body-worn cameras um, ahead of most of the other communities in the, in the area. Uh, merit call-outs, I had to remind myself of what merit stands for, correct me if I'm wrong, municipal emergency response and investigation team. I get it? Okay, he's saying it's going like this, that's close, okay. <laughs> Uh, we are very heavily invested with those folks. Uh, we send people there. Um, it's a cooperative effort, all the communities in the, in the county. When everything, when something very serious happens, we have help immediately. If something serious happens in another community, we send people to help, so it's a great, great system. Um, our chief is he heavily involved in that, and that's good for us and good for the rest of the uh, towns in the area. 
Um, and uh, again, crime, crimes of opportunity seem to be evolving, uh, not in a good way. Um, if you follow the news, you see smash and grabs a lot in stores, and hotels are having problems also. Again, the department saw these things happening somewhere else, preemptively have been meeting with her hotels to make sure that the hotels know how to protect themselves from things uh, that they don't want to happen. Another thing that it's nice to have some, have people in charge of safety who know what to do to prevent stuff rather than just solve it afterwards. Um, so again, our department is among the very best. Um, diversity, another thing we've made some really wonderful um, progress in the last year. We formed IDEC. Um, oh boy, now I gotta remember what that is. Uh, somebody here from IDEC? <laughs> Inclusion, diversity, equity, and awareness is the A is silent commission. Um, uh, this was uh, to address something proactively uh, that we had talked about for a long time. We want to be able to do this. We didn't have the resources to do it. We finally said, yeah, we've got to do this. We've got to go out there and we've got to make this happen, uh, not just because it happens organically, but we've got to promote it. Uh, it has been very successful so far. They're getting, uh, getting organized. The, the, the quality of volunteers for this commission is just astounding to me. The professional folks and the concerned folks that are so interested in working in that area of improving our community. Uh, we have now a diversity and inclusion statement so that officially we have, this is something that we intend to be as a community rather than that just happens because we'd like it to happen. Um, the important thing about this commission is that again, we are intentional about doing these things and making them happen. Uh, we're going to see more holidays that uh, reflect the diversity of our community that should be, that should be honored. We, uh, um, my wife is a teacher. Ask any of the teachers in the classrooms now, multiple languages. Um, it's important that we re address that and we respect those people and we invite them to be part of our community. Um, so this is uh, something else that I'm very proud that we're able to start to do this intentionally and not just uh, wish that we could do it. Um, there's our beautiful community, several different incarnations. Uh, City Hall, we had uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month where we all put on some pink and had our sign turn pink uh, just to let everybody be aware. The red ribbon cutting was at um, Horizon. Uh, the planters, of course, uh, Warnville and Bloom, wonderful volunteer groups started by none other than, of course, Vivian and Dwight Lund years ago uh, to help our community take some pride in the fact that we have some beauty here and we need to enhance that. It's worked out so well. Uh, every single year it gets a little bit better. Uh, the Everton um, Flats, uh, groundbreaking with all the I don't know what those are, but they're really cool looking, pumpkins or something. Um, beautiful place, glad to have it here. And then of course, the um, Warrenville Horizon at the bottom on the right. Um, but so many things in our community that are new, that are nice, that are showing our vitality and helping us become a sustainable place for the future. All right, that was 2021. Let's take a look at what's coming up and what will be our uh, probably still a transitional normal going in, hoping for the new normal. Going back to economic development, um, Riverview West townhomes. Um, this has been uh, on the back burner for a little while. It started out as um, owner-occupied. They're going to be rentals now. Uh, they'll be along the river. Uh, a beautiful site. Again, another place that because of its situation and because of the quality of the development next to it and the fact that the river's there, I can't imagine that the, these aren't going to sell um, well before they're even built. Uh, it'll be by Arden Apartments, another successful um, operation. Arden Apartments, I remember when we came down, Mary and I wrote our tandem down for the uh, fireworks and we came down the path along the river and on the left as we're going south is Arden Apartments and all these beautiful building all lit up and I thought these folks get to sit on their balcony with their favorite libation and some snacks and watch the fireworks in Warrenville. How cool is that? Um, a beautiful place. And again, this is 63 story units. They'll have rooftop decks. Uh, some of the things that we're getting now are have a little bit of an urban flavor, but where they are, it's going to fit. It's going to work. Of course, uh, the whole thing is 
Cities are somewhat troubled. People are looking for an alternative to the city, but they want amenities. We're providing that for them. You can come to Warrenville and you can get your three-story apartment, which sounds if you're my age and if you have my knees, you don't want that. But believe me, young people, um, Tim Kasgove and I uh, toured one up in Schaumburg. Uh, he's the chairman of the plan commission. We wanted to see what these were like as an approval was before us. They are absolutely charming. The, the, the way they're designed and the way they're amenitized, I can see why they, they sell quickly because uh, that particular group uh, loves that sort of thing. So those are going to be coming at uh, hopefully uh, in the next 18 months. Um, again, <clears throat> sit up straight. The rent will be somewhere around $3,000 a month. <laughs> but lots of amenities, <laughs> okay? And they, they fill up, so there are folks. And if you're going to invite people that are in community, don't you want to invite people who can afford $3,000 a month for rent? Because what are they going to do when they're in your community? They're going to go to your restaurants. They're going to go to your entertainment. They're going to support local businesses. They help for the vitality of the community. So for a lot of us, that would be prohibitively expensive. For a lot of folks, it's not. And they're happy to pay it to be able to come to a place that we have to offer. Um, some of the other things that um, I wish would happen that are, are kind of languishing, this uh, BP Training Center, if you're familiar with that building, it, it has the angled top and it's round. Um, not the one in Chicago, the one in Warrenville. Um, we're hoping to see that redeveloped with uh, 10 townhome buildings. Um, again, m with a little more of a, an urban flavor with the rooftop stuff and all of that um, to get those kind of people with limited parking so they're encouraged to keep their cars inside and not have cars and to, to walk. Trails connected to the other places in town. Um, and the actual training center would become one of those... Uh, um, corporate rental places where businesses can rent uh, rooms and suites for a period of time, either small businesses or out of town people who are coming to town to do business, um, which looks like a really good idea too. Um, we've met with those folks. Um, we're still waiting for a response. Um, ownership, I think, has changed to the property and there are some um, delays there, but we'd love to see that happen. Elite Ambulance Project would be over in our industrial park or where they would have a dispatch center for their um, ambulances, a b office, and so on. But another thing to add to the um, office park, um, again, we heard from them. We, they got some preliminary approvals, and we're still waiting for them to come back. Uh, Chicago Motor Cars Project is relatively new. It's out um, on Ferry Road west of 59. It's about... Um, uh, 102,000 square feet, and this motor cars thing would have 50,000 square feet of that to be the anchor for that. So that would be some more new businesses that would be coming to town. And uh, is this a, a good prospect, Ron? Is it something that's likely to happen? I got this, so we're good. All right, so that's another good thing that's coming um, next year. City projects, again, back to the Old Town Redevelopment Site number two. Uh, where we're at is, again, you can go online and see some preliminary plans for that. Uh, we're getting ready to do the preliminary engineering. Uh, there might be additional uh, remediation that we're going to have to make sure happens. But the goal, of course, is to take a site that's contaminated, underused, undervalued, and turn it into a gen for the community as, as rather than a, something that holds the community back. So envision in your head someday coming down the hill and seeing a couple of new business buildings. Uh, a park behind because a lot of that property is on the floodplain, so we want to open that up and along the river. So the potential there is just phenomenal to change the whole little older part of town and make it more, even more charming than it is now. Um, the zoning map overlay district for Old Town Civic Center, which again another one of those prosaic things that you, you know, okay, tell me all about it. Um, but it will. We have a lot of single-family homes in town, and now we have a lot of multifamily high density. Those are two vital things to have in your community. What we're missing a lot of time is what they call the missing middle. There are grades of those things in between that can add to the community. So we're investigating how we might attract those to Warrenville. In order to do that, Ron has determined that we've got to make some changes in our zoning code. So the zoning uh, uh, zone uh, commission will be working on that to make those changes. Again, to open up opportunities for things that we don't have that we see are desirable. Um, so that's coming up. Fiscal conservatism, uh, we're going to continue on the same track. I mean, the whole idea is to do what we're doing and, again, look for ways for new efficiencies. Um, Kevin does that constantly with his group downstairs. Uh, there are, uh,
Uh, all of our staff, in fact, one of the most important things I think that they do for us is they identify legacy things that we've been doing for a long period of time that maybe aren't the best way to do it and are maybe open us to some exposure. We need to change those things. The staff in Warrenville doesn't shove those in a drawer and put them on the side. They bring them to the council and say, we've got to do something with this because it's important we make that change. This isn't as good as it could be. Here's how it could be as good as it should be, and we act on it. Um, so we do that all the time. Uh, outside grants, it goes without saying that there isn't a project that happens in town um, that outside grants are available for that we don't avail ourselves of those opportunities. Hundreds of thousands of dollars of outside money uh, and people say, well, that's my tax money anywhere. Yeah, well, it's going to go somewhere. Might as well come to Warrenville, right? That tax money is allocated for a purpose. Why not take advantage of it in Warrenville? Our staff is excellent in making that happen for us. Um, the ERP system installation, uh, let's see, how can I put this in a positive light? The staff is back there shaking their heads. We've, we had such high hopes for this. <laughs> Uh, it has languished, unfortunately, not everything works out the way you would like it to work out. Um, little background, uh, Warrenville has evolved over a period of time for a little mom and pop operation. Uh, we did things as we were able to do them. We bought things as we were able to do them. We set up systems as we were able to do them. All very disparate. None of them talk to each other. Some are uh, past their lifespan. Others are no longer being supported by the people that uh, support them. Um, it's a mishmash because that's what we had to do to keep growing and get going. It's, at some point, uh, staff again came to us and said, this is not tolerable anymore. We have to do something about it. Um, so we hired um, some consultants that we had high hopes for, ERP, uh, Enterprise. Resource Planning. Resource Planning. There you go. Enterprise Resource Planning. Thank you. That's why I depend on staff all the time. Um, your enterprise is the city of Warrenville. The resources are all the things that we have to do and the things that we have to do those things with. And the planning is integrating all of that into one system. Um, so we can get rid of all these legacy systems that are some performing, some not performing. We can improve uh, communication between our people. Uh, it'll help our people doing inspections where they have all that stuff with them uh, in public works. It'll help our finance department. Um, all of these things, the police department, and again, all of our different departments would be in a position to communicate easily with each other as opposed to the system that we have now that's kind of uh, lackluster and not as good as it could be. The problem has been um, almost entirely with our consultants. We've had uh, the person that was initially going to run this for us is gone, and we've gone through three or four people since then. And if you can imagine, you've got a process going, and you get a new person running it every few months, and they've got to figure out what's going on. It has been a, a slow slog, and it's been very frustrating for staff. Um, so if you have any wishes for the new year, if you want to you know, lay awake at night and say, gee, I hope, I hope Warrenville gets that ERP thing settled, do that for us, will you? Or if you're in church, we could pray a little bit, too. That would be good. We're getting there. Um, it's just taken far longer than we anticipated and been very frustrating. Um, and again, uh, our, our, our reporting is by the book, period, and we continue that. We're not going to ever give that up. Um, I think Kevin would quit and move to Elk, move to Arizona before he would let us give that up. Open space and environment. Uh, again, the trailhead we talked about, that's coming along. Um, Construction in 2023, we, we would have liked to have seen that sooner. Um, uh, excuse me, the, the trail of 2022. Uh, the Mac Road uh, path, hopefully, 2023. Uh, another nice thing that um, I guess uh, both staff and elected officials have wanted to act on for quite some time is to provide paths along Route 59 uh, from uh, Walgreens down to Meadow. Um, if you're familiar with that area, we've already lost uh, lives there because it's a dangerous, dangerous place. There are no sidewalks on either side of the road. Um, we want to do that. We've wanted to do it for a long time. We're finally acting on that. Um, we'll see. Uh, again, finding the money to make it happen. We're looking at outside sources of income, but that's something that has moved from the back burner to the front burner because it's very important for the community. Um, coal tar, uh, if you have a an asphalt driveway every few years, you gotta 
get out there and put that black stuff on there. Well, there's two kinds of that black stuff, one of which is horrible and one of which is environmentally sensitive. Um, our Sam Kozgov, again on the Plan Commission, said, hey, how come we're allowing coal tar in the city of Warrenville? It's a horrible thing. The, we're going to act on that. Um, we're working on uh, getting the um, what we have to get ready to be able to do those inspections and so on. In the meantime, we've encouraged people through the newsletter to make sure whoever you're hiring to do this does not use the coal tar that uses the environmentally good stuff. Um, so we're in the process of educating the public and also putting in place ordinances that will allow us to control that to make sure it doesn't happen in town. Uh, so a relatively small thing, but again, it's a, a step in the direction that we need to go. We need to start protecting the environment more and more as we move along. Hybrid police vehicle. Um, We'll see. Uh, it's another thing that we'd like to do. We have the opportunity to service those vehicles at the Forest Preserve District uh, station up on Mack Road, uh, where we gas up our vehicles. They have everything we need to do that. It's finding ones uh, that are reliable, that uh, the police department can depend on, that will perform in a way that's necessary for them to uh, do their duties safely. Uh, so something else that we're working on. Infrastructure in the city. <clears throat> well, there's the road program, program, which will be slightly larger again. Uh, Williams Road Bridge, um, what year did we do that again, Ron? Five years ago? It's been at least five years. Um, okay, so it's maybe six years. Um, there are some uh, little things that have to be fixed with that. Uh, any project of that size that involves uh, compaction and rebuilding and moving things around, you're going to have some settling, you're going to have some problems. The bridge itself is fine. Some of the sidewalks and the curbs are showing some problems with settling. Uh, those are going to be repaired. There's some work that needs to be done underneath the bridge um, uh, for scouring to make sure that doesn't happen to the columns. So there are some improvements that have to be made after five years of service on that bridge. That's scheduled to happen. And the uh, I, I program again, I'll go through that again if you like. Raise your hand if you want to hear that again. Nobody? Okay, I guess we have to move on. Um, water tower stuff, again, more prosaic things that you just have to do. Uh, one of them, the, the uh, West Street one, gets a new coat of paint on the outside, and the uh, Country Ridge one gets a new coat of paint on the inside. Uh, and yes, in order to paint the inside, it has to be emptied, uh, scraped down, cleaned, and everything. It's about a five-week process. Um, fortunately for us, because of our Public works people, our system, our water system is designed in such a way that it will have no impact on people. Um, uh, it could if it, if it wasn't designed properly, but it is. So there will be no impact on folks when that gets done. But another thing that has to happen, uh, engineering projects. Um, again, the Mac Road Bridge is uh, uh, front and center. We'd love to get that done and get it taken care of before it's a problem. Um, all of the growth. Uh, West of 59 uh, and a little bit east of 59, obviously while those new people and new businesses means there's a, an increased demand for water. Uh, we've known this for quite some time that we need another water tower. Uh, we're in the process of uh, getting a piece of land to do that on. Um, it's it's going to have to happen, obviously, to keep the service level at the level that we need to have it at. Um, so that's something that's coming. We'll have another, another water tower. Um, Batavia Road between... Um, or 59 in Fermi Lab is going to get re, uh, repaved, and the square courts in uh, Summer Lakes, again, part of the program to do these things in, in such a way that they get done before they become an emergency. Public safety. <clears throat> EMA, Emergency Management Agency. I got one. Uh, tabletop exercises. Uh, the department, uh, the police department, uh, myself, and uh, the MA folks, again, another great group of volunteers that come out when we have an emergency, when power lines are down, when there's a storm, they're out there helping the police department. Um, we go through exercises. We just did one for a tornado, for a tornado at a certain level. We're going to be continue to do that so that we're used to getting together and we know the process to get through these things, how to get help from the outside, how to handle things immediately. What do you do first? How do you do these things? How, do every, how does everybody work together? How do we work with the fire protection district to make sure that their uh, resources are available and used? So that's one of the things that we will continue to do on a regular basis is to have those tabletop exercises. Okay, here's what happened. This is what got damaged. Here's the body count. Here's what's accessible. Here are the roads that are closed. Deal with it. 
And then we sit in the room and we have to figure out how we're going to deal with that, how we're going to make that better as soon as possible. Um, neighborhood roll calls will continue. Hopefully uh, we'll get attendance growing on that, but that's another outreach effort again uh, to get the officers right in face to face with the, with the citizens, with the kids. I did another a bike ride uh, um, with Sergeant, um, who did I ride with again this summer? <laughs> Maxwell. Uh, I rode with him again. We did, uh, and another officer, we did a 15 mile trip around Warrenville on our bikes. And it was delightful because we saw people out working in their yards. We'd stop and we'd say hi and talk to them. We'd see kids. Um, another outreach effort, again, to cement that relationship between the department and the, and the citizens. So if you see me out on the bike, I actually have a nice jersey that says mayor on the back. Um, sometimes I think it's a target, but I wear it anyway. Um, so we'll be doing that again this year. Uh, National Light Out, again, award-winning, a wonderful thing. Come out if you haven't. Um, recruiting officers, um, uh, the department has gone from, I guess when I first got on the council, I knew pretty much everybody on the department. Now there are a few that have been with us a long time and most of them are new. If you saw the portfolios that these folks bring, the new folks that we're bringing, what an augmentation to the experienced people that we have already. Um, it's just delightful to, to see their desire to be a good cop, their desire to be in Warrenville and learn how to be a good cop. And then thirdly, Warrenville is the place where they can learn to be a good cop because of the people that we have and the department we have. So that's always exciting to see the, the people that we get. Um, ballistic helmets for officers, again, another necessity. We hope that um, they're never gonna be needed, but the one time that they do, they will be glad that we have them. Um, <laughs> maybe you won't be happy about this. We'll make it a little easier to write tickets. Hey, watch the speed limit, behave yourself. You don't have to worry about it. Um, solar speed signs, I find those to be very helpful for myself. If I see it says 35 and I'm at 40, I slow down, I guess. I don't know, I, I gotta think that other people do that also. At least if they're speeding, they're aware of it. A small thing, but again, that adds to the, I think, the safety in the community. And diversity. Again, the IDEC Commission is going to be working on a number of things as they get uh, more steam and get a, a better chance to get organized and move ahead. Um, a lot of outreach planned, uh, a lot of communications um, with other agencies, with our citizens, um, do some focus groups. Um, the whole idea, again, is to enhance community by inviting people to participate. Um, because let's face it, if, if you're asked to be part of something, you're more likely to care about what you're being asked to be part of. If you're excluded, why should you care? So it's to the benefit of the community to bring in people that are new, bring in people that are a little different than the norm of what we've had and say, yeah, we want you here. You're part of our community. Let's help you become part of the community. So this commission, again, I'm very excited at uh, what they might be able to accomplish for us over a period of time. Diversify city employment, that's always important to us. We have Spanish speakers on our, on our uh, staff already. Um, and of course, uh, celebrate everybody's holiday. I mean, why not? It seems like, uh, again, another thing to do that uh, helps community unite. And that brings us to, I know you're disappointed, but I'm about to wrap up. What are we gonna do? Well, I, I can speak for us, and I'm hoping I'm speaking for all of you also here, because at the city, we're going to continue to do all the things that I've listed. Um, we're going to be present. We're going to be present in the time that we're in and try to do the best job we can now, not try to look back all the time and say, gee, I wish it was the way it was, not try to wish I had all the time saying, gee, I wish it was different. We're going to accept what we have and deal with that as best we can. We're gonna do our best to be informed about what's happening in the world, the changes that we need to make. And this is again where staff is instrumental for us because they spend their time looking for all of these things to make sure that we're on the cutting edge of understanding what's going on out there. Except the fact that everything is not the way we want it, that there are some hardships, there will be hardships coming up. We've dealt with them, we will continue to deal with them. It's part of the way it is, we're gonna do it. Uh, reinvent because we have to constantly change. We can't just always do the things the way we've done them in the past. We have to accept that. Sometimes we're going to be uncomfortable and we're not going to want to make that change. That's familiar to all of you, I know, because it's familiar to me. Uh, and to build. Um, I'm a cabinet maker. I've been in construction my whole life. Building is important. 
building is uh, part of sustainability, as part of making your community a better place. Uh, things wear out and have to be replaced. There's a sadness in having them torn down. There's a joy in seeing the new thing that replaces it. So we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to try to do things better than we've done in the past. Um, pivoting, you know what that means. You've gotta, you're going in this direction full tilt, and all of a sudden, yeep, well, you've got to change a little bit. Ask anybody who's in business. That's what you've got to do to survive. Uh, and evolve, change all the time, um, hopefully in the direction of, again, being a better community. Innovation, creativity, all very important. Um, and always look for new opportunities. And finally, uh, two last things. The, the lean-in thing is from a friend of mine who was a neighbor for 35 years, Ed Clark, uh, one of the wisest gentlemen I ever knew. Um, his advice was uh, when you're facing change and adversity, you lean into it. You don't back away from it. You don't run away from it. You don't jump into it foolishly. You lean into it. Think about that for a while. It makes a lot of sense because now you're going to deal with it, but you're not going to go nuts. You're not going to go off the edge. So that's, that's what we're going to continue to do, and we're going to continue to be grateful for all the things that we're blessed for in this town. Um, the great staff, the good elected officials, the wonderful police department, the school district, the fire protection district, the uh, Park District, the Warrenville Library, all of these things are doing so well because they're well run, they're well managed by good people. I'm grateful for that. Um, I don't have to worry about the library. They're, they're doing great. The same thing with the Fire Protecting District, the Park District. They're all doing great because they're, they're great people. I'm very grateful for that. I'm grateful for you being here tonight and sharing this with me. Um, I could probably go on for a lot longer, um, but I know you're you know, you're grateful for the fact that you can go home soon. <laughs> so add that to your gratitude bundle for the evening. Um, and so that's it. Um, this, uh, at one time when I first saw this quote, I, uh, I saw it as a somewhat of a lament. Um, I've changed my view of this now, of Robert Frost. I've loved some of his poems. I could recite one for you right now, but I won't. Uh, in three words, I can sum up everything I've learned about life. It goes on. Now I see that as a hopeful statement. Um, given what we've had to in, uh, endure the last couple of years, the uncertainty, the problems, uh, the uncivility, all of the things that you just shake your head and you say, when are we going to get through this? Life will go on. We will get through it, and we'll be in a better place. So with that, thank you all. God bless, and uh, let's have a good year. Thank you. This conference is no longer being recorded.